Okay, so here's the thing, right? Uh, we all know after decades of marriage, most things become routine. Going through the motions, and one of my friends is always saying, like, you ask him, so hey, how's it? How are things? How's the wife? And he always says, you know, going through the motions. <laughs> yeah, so physical attraction and intimacy is <laughs> hard to maintain over time. You know, the pot belly, the love handles, the boldness. The increased image of God, that's what you call it. You don't call your partner fat. You say the image of God has increased because they're also called love handles. Yeah, so the list is endless, all those physical changes that come about. And sadly, you know, the sad part is that uh, uh, oxytocin, which is um, the bonding or the cuddle or the love hormone, call it whatever you want to call it. That's the hormone that when you were 18, remember when you were 18, yeah, oxytocin is released in bucket loads. Yeah, that's the cuddle and love hormone. But of course, as you age, it diminishes with time. So you have to work on keeping the oxytocin flowing. So yeah, this powerful hormone, by the way, is released every time couples snuggle up or they bond together oxytocin is released okay so it's not all doom and gloom especially my men folk uh, <laughs> you can keep the fire burning believe it or not there is or actually not there is there are solutions so here's a few of them some of them you can make up your own i'm sure you have your own how you're trying to rekindle the flame keep the intimacy going in your marriage PDA, which is public display of affection. I've covered this before actually uh, on one of the shows. Now, if you thought French people <laughs> are the best at display, displaying PDA, ah, oh my word, you have to see the Belgians when it comes to public display of affection. I've never seen so much PDA in my entire life. So a Belgium once told me that the reason for that is because they need to start early. <laughs> in the day so pda actually does help the release of that elusive oxytocin so <laughs> when you're in belgium when you see people over displaying the pda just know that they're trying to set the tone okay so pda is one of those things the bedroom now here's the thing keep the bedroom sacred people avoid discussing serious matters in the bed you know like finances sick relatives mortgages funerals the bedroom is only for bedroom things period nothing else laughing together that's always something that releases the oxytocin laughing together not at each other but if you laugh together that's one way of also keeping the <laughs> Now, even if you're not a touchy person, some people are not touchy, we can understand, but touching is good, it's been recommended. Gentle touch, gentle touch. <laughs> you know, the massage, the back rub, you know, that kind of thing. Now, make each other the priority. I mean, everybody has kids and people think that kids become the priority. No, the two of you are always a priority in each other's lives. The kids are important, yes, but you are the most important people to each other, okay? Now, when you're apart, yes, you can communicate with the gadgets, WhatsApp or text or emails, but when you're together, keep the gadgets away. Stay away from electronics, TV, tablets, etc. You know, try doing something or watching something together. Doing simple tasks like washing dishes, going grocery shopping i highlighted this uh on the brownie points uh video that you know going shopping together is actually a way in which you can bond and create that intimacy having a coffee together at a cafe or somewhere that's also one way of creating intimacy now here's something that we're all guilty of especially adults the elderly <laughs> as we keep being reminded have a work-life balance yeah have a work-life balance and of course have a balance between your spouse and yourself so you need to be independent and interdependent okay so have individual hobbies and have professional lives a lot of us have professional lives your spouse has a professional life so keep that as much as possible out of your relationship and when you have a social life make sure that then you bring everything else together and invest in your marriage so i call it yeah this is my own theory the intersection theory remember your venn diagrams in school you have your own things she has her own thing but then you bring them together then there's that intersection in the middle where you're individually independent with friends with individual hobbies but then you bring everything together the finances and other hobbies that you share together into that intersection where it becomes one and you have a secure happy couple because remember you're also a husband 
she's also a wife, you're a father, she's a mother, she's someone's friend, you're someone's friend, you're a brother, a sister, she's a brother, she's a sister, you may be a boss, I hate that term at the office, you know, but a church elder, you might even be a DJ, you know, but so keep those things independent, then bring them together to share the stuff that you do. So you need alone time and then you also need to be alone together with your partner, that makes sense, right? This all ends into what is called emotional intimacy. Now, emotional intimacy is what is very key to a healthy marriage and <clears throat> healthy intimacy. Because when it's missing, intimacy and of course, ultimately the marriage ends up going south. What is Im emotional intimacy, you may ask? Well, it's the closeness that the two of you have. You know, there's always that closeness that makes you feel secure and loved and you trust each other. You know, it's also about knowing your spouse's hopes, their dreams and their fears. You have to know all that. For the men, put it this way, emotional intimacy is acknowledging the fact that algae, forest green, Xanadu, alabaster, lemonade, iris, azure, moss, ash, and jet black are all colors.